Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Econobox Garage. If you watched the previous video, you'll have seen that I needed to figure out the proper routing for the pipe that went from the brake distribution block to the right front brake hose. I would just like to say a big thank you to those of you who sent me some photographs so I could figure that out. So in this episode, I'm going to finish off the brake lines, get the fuel line run, get a little bit of wiring run, and also look at the dimmer switch. So thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy this week's video. In the previous video, I worked on running brake lines from the back of the car, or to the back of the car, I should say, and then from the master cylinder and over to the left side front brake, which goes along here and up and over to the, the brake hose, which would mount right in here. One thing I didn't get to uh, was the line that runs from the four-way junction to the right-hand side front brake. This is how mine was configured in the car but I wasn't confident that it was the correct way of doing it. And several people sent me photos of how the, that pipe is routed on their car. Uh, it, it goes under the damper, and when it comes through the other side, it uh, comes in front of the damper here, and then just does a tight bend into that. So that's how I'm going to do mine. And in order to make sure I've got the right clearances, I'm going to install the front damper in the correct position here so I make sure I don't get interference on that and I will also put the one on this side to make sure I haven't messed up with that one as well okay so I've cleaned up the bolts and washers and what have you on the, the for the damper uh, and this side it came off the car there were a couple of shims uh, uh, that go underneath I'm assuming that's for alignment but I'll confirm that before I put everything back together now that I have that damper in place, I can start work on bending the uh, brake pipe to that spot. So as you can see from this picture, this is a really tight bend and my pipe bender won't go that tight a radius. So what I'm going to do to kind of, to get a smooth a bend as possible is to use a socket that's clamped in the vise and to help reduce the chance of the pipe collapsing, I've just pushed some wire uh, inside the pipe. Now uh, let's go back over to the car and see if that fits. So there we have the new pipe all bent up. It just comes out of the block and goes down through here, uh, not touching the side here. It's not touching the, the damper itself. Uh, it makes that relatively sharp bend here. And there's plenty of room between the arm of the damper and the bend on the pipe. So before I call that job done, I'm gonna check on this side Looks like I may have to readjust uh, the bends in the pipe there 
to clear the damper. Well, here's the left-hand side brake line installed, and actually I've got a lot of clearance. Uh, clears the arm of the damper, clears the damper itself uh, along there, and around that side. Lots of room there, so I don't have to make any adjustments on that one. So now that the brake lines are done, I'm going to tackle the fuel line next. So the fuel line will run under the car, paralleling the brake line we installed earlier, along this lip along here, up to the front, um, across the cross member here, and then up into this area underneath the carburetors. So this is the old fuel line, and you can see it's got the arch that goes up and over the differential. I won't be using that part um, because I've got that electric fuel pump that I installed a while back and I'll put a link up above to that video. Um, I do have a new line to run from the tank to the new fuel pump, so I'll put that in when I get the tank in. Um, and at the other end, uh, you can see there's three clips. Uh, one here, one here, and here. This part of the pipe goes through the engine bay and that, so I'm gonna get working on that. And that will be replaced uh, by this line here. I'm actually got this the wrong way around. So this is the back. This is the part that will go underneath the seat rail and get clipped in like the brake line did uh, that I showed you in the previous video. Uh, it curves up, runs along the side, and I just have to do the rest of the bending uh, with this part here. Now I have reinstalled the fuel pump. And you can see the brake line coming up from underneath. And then the fuel pump's mounted there. You'll see the brake line goes along the inside edge of that reinforcing. The fuel line's going to go along the outside edge. And it will get clipped in much like the uh, brake line did. Oh, there's the fuel line. It's clipped in the rib along the floor. It comes along the lip of this, the frame rail, and then across the front here, and then up. And then this will be cut off somewhere in here, but I'll leave that wild for just a bit. Uh, one other thing I've done is I've run the wiring for the dimmer switch, or the dipper switch. It comes up through um, here and then just across and again, that's just so it's a lot easier to put this in um, In behind here with the engine out than it is with the engine in So it's part of the new wiring harness I bought, but I'll go over that in more detail in a future video So I'll just show you where those wires come out on the other side Well, you can see them just down there the blue wires and those will hook into the back of the dimmer switch when we get that put in And here is the dimmer switch. I just put it in the vise here. I'm going to give it a good clean. I might put a fresh coat of paint on the bracket itself. And there's the connectors on the back. I'll have to clean those off so that I can uh, get a good connection when this goes back in the car. So I have the little screws and tabs um, off the back of the dimmer switch. Just had to use some uh, penetrant and little wire brush to clean the threads off so that they could come out without stripping or shearing the bolt. So what I'll do is I'll get these spots all cleaned up on the back of the switch um, nice and clean so we'll end up with a positive electrical connection and I'll clean off the screws and the tabs here as well. So there's the three tabs uh, all cleaned up and I've done the same on the switch itself. This one was already fairly clean. Uh, this one was rusty but that cleaned off to get a good connection and the same on this one. So I'll just give the outside of the switch a good clean, clean up the bracket, shoot a coat of paint on it, and then that one will be ready to go back in the car. So before putting everything back together um, and assuming that this is going to work, I thought I would just uh, test it out. So we'll get that one on the center connector. And if we put this one on there, you can see there's uh, on the ammeter here, there's 
no reading, flip the switch, and it goes to zero. But if I go over to the other, other tab here, if I go over to the other tab, and do the same thing, I've got zero there, or um, infinite resistance there, flip the switch, and we're up to zero. So that tells me that that switch is in good operating condition. Well, that's all I have time for this week. It's very exciting to have things going back on the car. Uh, get that little bit of wiring run. The pipes finished up. If you enjoyed the video, please share it with your friends. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And don't forget that little bell icon so you'll get notified when the next video comes out. My name is Ian. This is the Econobox Garage. We'll see you next time. Thank you.